Okay, so uh, welcome again. Um, uh, today's webinar is about the integration of uh, Riverflow 2D with uh, the SMS, Aquaveo's SMS. Um, I think that if uh, we judge the interest in two-dimensional model modeling uh, based on the people who register to our webinars, um, I feel we are we're getting a, a, a big interest in, in two-dimensional modeling in the late lately because uh, today's webinar uh, has had the largest number of people registered ever and we exceeded the limitation we, we normally have in the go-to webinar go to webinar is limited to 100 attendees and uh, we, we far exceeded that number today and uh, based on that I can can see that the interest in interdimensional model is growing um, so uh, the title of today's webinar is uh, Riverflow 2D and SMS, the perfect couple for productive 2D hydraulic modeling. And I will try to uh, describe uh, the, the main capabilities of Riverflow 2D and SMS and how they work together. And I will do a demonstration also, a live demonstration that uh, hopefully will help you understand how the, these two softwares um, interact and how they can uh, work together to help you do better two-dimensional modeling. Um, so let's, uh, let's get it started. Well, some of you um, haven't been exposed to Riverflow 2D, so let, uh, let me briefly summarize what uh, Riverflow 2D does, what it is and what it does. Um, Riverflow 2D is a two-dimensional river and estuary hydrodynamics model. Um, it has a basic um, engine that solves the shallow water equations in two dimensions and has a number of modules or add-on models uh, that include a sediment transport module that does erosion and deposition and this particular model, module allow, allows you to model uh, both uh, suspended and bed load transport with multiple fractions and you can use either of uh, suspended or bed load or combined um, mechanism in the same simulation. Um, we also have a pollutant transport model and the pollutant transport model works with multiple pollutants and is uh, basically a advection dispersion reaction uh, model that uh, is very uh, useful for uh, modeling uh, dispersion of pollutant in, in riverine environments. Then we have the modern debris flow uh, model. Um, I believe uh, Riverflow 2D is the only mod and debris flow model based on flexible mesh. Um, I think this makes this model unique in that regard uh, to handle uh, very viscous uh, flows uh, as occur in the mod and debris flow uh, type of uh, modeling. Uh, this is also useful for tailing dams type of uh, simulations where you have a hyper concentration of sediment in the water. Um, and finally, we have uh, the oil flow 2D that was released uh, actually last month. And it's a model for um, simulating oil spills on land. And it, it does uh, viscous flow with uh, free surface. Um, all of these uh, models and modules work with the flexible mesh, uh, so we only use triangular elements, and all the elements can have a different size and can be adapted as much as you need to complex geometries. And, and probably this is the, the common ground on which all of our models 
tan. Um, river flow to me does uh, supercritical, supercritical and subcritical flow. Uh, it doesn't uh, require special attention on the user part. It's all handled out automatically, and it does that with extreme uh, stability. Uh, the model has uh, a comprehensive hydraulic structure module. It's included in the basic uh, license uh, for the hydrodynamic part. Uh, and I will talk a little bit about that uh, later. And the model is uh, basically parallelized for multiple core computers. And also, we have uh, a version for GPUs. And I will also discuss this a little bit today. And um, it works in either English or metric units, multiple projections as well. Um, now, there are many advantages, uh, we believe, that the River Flow 2D model has. Um, it, uh, the, the dry and wet bed algorithm is very robust, as I mentioned, so it's very adequate to model um, routing hydrograph where you have areas of your domain that get wet at some point and then dry uh, during the flooding stages. And it does... It does does that with uh, full volume conservation, which is very remarkable. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so we, uh, the model is based on um, a, a finite volume uh, algorithm, which is uh, very stable and accurate. Uh, normally, the error, the volume conservation error you may expect is in the order of 10 to the minus 12%. So it's virtually uh, zero error in volume conservation. Um, the model is very fast, as you will see. I will show you some examples of how fast it is with respect to the non-parallelized model with the GPU version. Uh, it handles all hydraulics regimes and uh, mixed flows. Uh, it has been extensively tested in a large set of conditions, both uh, control conditions, flume, conditions, uh, uh, different type of projects, uh, and so forth. Um, it's totally integrated with the graphical user interface. So today's our focus is on the SMS uh, user interface, but also we have uh, we support other uh, interfaces like Argus One, and we are developing an, uh, a new one based on QGIS as well. Um, we provide, with each license, uh, technical support and also online training. Um, and I will talk also a little bit about that later. Now, with respect to speed, I think speed is, is becoming a key a factor in two-dimensional modeling. Some um, people uh, are a little afraid of two-dimensional model because they, they have been exposed, maybe, to other models that are very slow. And they, you know, with, with, with all, uh, you know, knowledge, they, they say, well, I'm afraid to go in, into another 2D uh, experience applying this to a project because it's so slow. Now, with the River Flow 2D, um, you can have simulations that run um, in our test 100 times faster than other models or other non-parallelized models, including River Flow 2D non-parallelized version. So you're talking here about two orders of magnitudes uh, reduced in computer time, which is something that changed the whole game in two-dimensional modeling. Now, these tests here are recent tests that we have performed, uh, and uh, these tests correspond to different uh, graphic cards, different hardware that you need to run this GPU version, and also different uh, mesh sizes. So we are interested in looking at the speed up of the GPU version with different meshes. And this one here go from uh, uh, 20,000 to 1.8 million cell meshes in our particular project. Now this, uh, this um, um, cards that you see here, the Titan Black, this is not so expensive card, this is a little more expensive card, but 
the bars indicate the speed up. Uh, so this means that this particular run um, corresponds to the 1.8 million cell uh, mesh and it runs 98 times faster than the same mesh run on a one core computer. So you get 100 times faster results, exactly the same results, by the way. Uh, the medium size mesh, uh, the speed up is not as big, but it's still respectable 58 times faster. And the smaller mesh uh, is 15 times faster, which is also remarkable if you look at it. Um, now, but the trend it's always the same, the larger the mesh, the larger the speed up, but still with smaller meshes, you get a very respectable speed up from 12 times to 20 times or more. And this applies also to different hardware that are not, um, as I said, not very expensive. Uh, just so you, have an idea. This particular car here costs less than $400 nowadays. Uh, this one here costs about uh, $900 or so. So with uh, a little investment, you can be performing simulations at uh, very short times that were inimaginable uh, even a short time uh, before. Um, now, this particular simulation, uh, it would take eight hours in a one core computer. And you can perform the same simulation in five minutes. <clears throat> Sorry. So it, uh, from the uh, productivity point of view of two dimensional modeling and even modeling, uh, you, you get an immense uh, gain with uh, the GPU version of River Flow 2D. Now this, uh, this is, um, uh, being tested uh, extensively as we talk, uh, we have uh, an ongoing uh, research and development agreement with NOAA, uh, and particularly with one of NOAA's river forecast centers. Uh, we are presently running um, a 420 river mile of the Red River of the North. Uh, this is being done um, both uh, inside NOAA, in, with NOAA's computer and hardware, and also in Hadronia uh, servers. Uh, this um, 400 river mile um, reach of the Red River goes uh, through Fargo, and it's a river that has uh, a lot of uh, flooding, creates a lot of flooding problems. But just so you have an idea, uh, I will show you two examples here. 40-day uh, hydrograph. So it's a... Uh, it's, um, long time simulation with a, a million cell uh, mesh. It takes about two hours to compute. The uh, smaller cell, uh, smaller number of cells, but uh, refined. This is a non-refined uh, mesh. This is a refined mesh in the main river and not refined elsewhere, which is, makes sense. It takes about 30 minutes to model the 40-day hydrograph in the 40, uh, 420 river mile. Well, um, these times are so remarkable or more remarkable when you compare with the equivalent 1D model that has been implemented in the same reach. The 1D model that models the same 40-day hydrograph in the same region takes seven hours on the order of seven hours to run. Uh, so the GPU is so, um, I think, revolutionary that it can provide simulations that could be, in some cases, even faster than 1D simulations. Now, the hydraulic components of the River Flow 2D include uh, rainfall and evaporation. Uh, it's a simple model for rainfall and evaporation so far. We are developing a new a hydrologic model which uh, comprehensive uh, rainfall and infiltration as well. Uh, we have already a culvert component that can calculate actually the based on the culvert geometric characteristics the uh, discharge in the two-dimensional mesh. 
Uh, we have a weir component uh, that is also very uh, useful for uh, uh, modeling structures in rivers, um, internal rating tables, sources and sinks, uh, bri uh, bridge pier, drug forces. Uh, so the bridges can be uh, calculated in different forms. One of them is just uh, given the uh, location of the bridge pier and letting the model uh, compute the drag force based on the velocity of flow and other uh, parameters. Um, we have uh, recently released a much more comprehensive bridge component. I will talk a little bit about that and also a gate component that is also very useful. Now the bridges component uh, that uh, was released a couple of months ago allows uh, simulation of arbitrary plan alignments. Uh, any form uh, plan uh, alignment of the bridge uh, it can handle very complex uh, bridge geometries. Uh, it can handle uh, free surface flow, pressure flow, overtopping, or combine pressure flow and overtopping. It's, it's a totally comprehensive um, bridge simulation for a two-dimensional model. The, the component has been, it's been fully tested. Uh, there have been more than 200 uh, laboratory experiments where it has been compared not only with actual data, as you see here, um, in, in different uh, bridges uh, geometries, in different conditions uh, with pressure, surface flow, um, and all, but also compared with HECRAS. Uh, so we, we have, uh, if you're interested, I uh, have the full set, uh, or I can point you to a reference where it reports on all this testing that was done in the model. Uh, of course, the, the bridge component is very useful for analyzing the effect of bridges in, in different uh, rivers. In this case, it's an extreme effect of uh, a bridge encroachment here and here. And you can see the effect that this causes on the whole flow. This is a very steep uh, reach of a river. Now, the gates component. Um, allows you to model sluice gates. It has been uh, also implemented recently in the model. It can handle um, multiple situations, uh, also arbitrary plan alignment, free surface flow, overtopping, uh, all conditions, uh, virtually all different conditions of flow uh, across a sluice gate, including the overtopping of the gate itself. Uh, we have other going developments, and, and all of these ongoing developments are uh, done in collaboration with the University of Zaragoza. We have a very active collaboration with uh, the uh, computational hydraulic group there. And this has allowed us to progress very fast in developing new um, capabilities of the model. Um, well, first we have uh, changed the name of the model. We did that a few months ago from river flow 2D to river flow 2D. Um, and February, we released the sediment transfer module. Uh, we uh, released in April the pollutant transport uh, module. In May, we updated the GPU with that, uh, with that optimized code that uh, is able now to run with the same hardware up to 15% faster than the previous release. In August, we, we released uh, the bridges and gates component I briefly talked about. Um, in October, we released the oil flow to the to model uh, oil spills on land that is used in, in oil spill risk analysis from uh, tank breaks, uh, uh, leaks from pipelines, and so forth. And we have a number of very exciting developments that are coming up uh, in the next few months. Um, we have a temperature dependent viscosity uh, for the oil spill module, a hydrologic model that will handle spatially variable rainfall and also spatially variable infiltration with different methods, um, wind stress on the water surface, a 1D, 2D model, uh, faster GPU, and also eventually will or, or Goal is to have 
all the modules migrated to the GPU platform. So far, we have uh, all the hydrodynamic components in the GPU platform, but the modules only run so far in the CPU. Eventually, they, they all uh, will go to the GPU platform as well. Um, we are integrating the Riverflow 2D with QGIS, which is an open source uh, GIS uh, um, model, um, software. Um, and also we are experimenting with the Riverflow 2D in the cloud. We, we have uh, a simple portal where you can, um, it's experimental still, but uh, we, we want to make this uh, more open so uh, users could uh, uh, send resolve uh, data files to a server that would run the GPU version um, remotely. Well, uh, now let me talk a little bit about SMS. SMS is a software for two-dimensional modeling. It's been in the market for quite uh, some time already. Uh, there are many other two-dimensional models that use it. Some of them are, are public domain, some of them are proprietary, and uh, the surface um, water modeling system, SMS, is um, developed by Aquaveo. And we have a uh, agreement with Aquaveo uh, that allows to provide to you the SMS system integrated with Riverflow 2D. Now, the uh, Riverflow 2D SMS integration is um, tighter and tighter as time progresses. We have been upgrading the original integration that was somehow a little um, uh, weak in a sense. Uh, we, we have been in, in, uh, increasing the number of uh, options uh, to offer. And uh, now uh, we have recently uh, included the, the bridge component also in this new uh, version. Um, the SMS is essentially a graphic user interface. Uh, it's based on the conceptual model approach. All the information that you enter is uh, georeferenced and allows you to enter data like elevations, um, shape files, uh, aerial image in different layers. And all these layers relate to each other so that your final mesh uh, includes the data, the boundary conditions necessary to run the model. And you run the model from the, the SMS system as well. Uh, it has a number of features to import the data. It imports a large number of uh, data formats. Um, it works in familiar GIS environment with, with points, arcs, uh, pole lines, and so forth. Um, and I think one of the, the big advantages of SMS is the advanced processing capabilities. You can um, take the model results and plot it in a number of ways, in 2D, in 3D, in animation form. Uh, you can combine plots of uh, water surface with uh, velocity in many different uh, ways. And, and this is done very easily, and I will try to show it today uh, so that you can see how this works. Um, the mesh generation in SMS is very straightforward. Uh, you can adapt your mesh to very complex topography, and it's totally uh, automatic, uh, automatic uh, and you can generate the mesh adapted to the, the variable um, topography, you can generate break lines, you can have uh, internal obstacles. Uh, I will also show you how to do it. This is an example of things you can do. You can refine the mesh in different parts to adapt, uh, better adapt or have a higher resolution in areas that you're interested in. Uh, you have a mesh quality report and you can use a variety of interpolation methods uh, to pass the elevation data that you have to the mesh. Uh, input data format, I, I don't have time to go over all of them, but you have virtually all uh, available formats that uh, you can imagine to import data into the model, as well as the graphic output. 
Uh, there are many ways to generate the graph for cross sections, profiles, observation points. Um, you can plot uh, maximum velocities, uh, water elevations, um, fruit number, wet shear stress. And in the modules, you can do sediment discharge, uh, concentrations, and explore that in different forms. In, in, in graphic form, just static graphics, in formats, rasters, but also in animation form. Um, I think the dynamic visualization is very uh, important to not only for presentation purposes, but also to analyze the model results. I think by looking at how the water moves dynamically in, in the area and over the, your, your aerial, uh, it's, uh, it's very informative to understand the, what you are trying to accomplish in your project. And this is done very easily in the SMS uh, system. You can generate also animation files in ADI format. And you can also directly export uh, the results in Google Earth and connect directly to Google Earth if you have it installed it and visualize the animations in your Google Earth environment. Um, the type of animations that you can make allow you to uh, visualize the flow in many different ways. And that combined with the accuracy and the speed of, of uh, computation of the River Flow 2D model makes the SMS and the River Flow 2D uh, a very good combination to um, provide results to your clients. Uh, as you see here, uh, this is a, a, a flow around structures, irregular structures. Uh, this is done by variable size uh, element mesh. It wouldn't be almost, uh, you, you could make this with a, with a fixed grid uh, mesh, but it's virtually impossible to capture the detail that you get in irregular geometry objects uh, with, uh, without having the access to a flexible mesh model that allows you to refine and adapt very accurately to the, the regular geometries. Also, in the River Flow 2D, you can get very accurate representation of the flow patterns, as you can see here. This is actually an animation. I will play to you. Uh, it may happen that due to the bandwidth, you cannot see this animation. Uh, you may see it, uh, breaks in the animation. But that's because of the bandwidth. But I will play it anyway. Uh, this is a trace flow uh, that allows you to uh, visualize the flow uh, in, in a different way. I think it's very um, useful to understand how the water moves and um, the fluid around these different objects. And you can generate these plots very easily with SMS and river float. Um, Okay, let me uh, then start a quick demonstration uh, on how the River Flow 2D works with SMS. Uh, this is a live demonstration uh, starting from scratch. So I, I want you to feel uh, how uh, easy is this to perform. Um, so this is the SMS uh, basic um, user interface. You have a project uh, frame here where you will see the different layers that are added to the project. And you see here display window, and there are many other uh, tools I have no time to go over. I will go use uh, some of them today. Uh, but they are, uh, uh, SMS is a very comprehensive system. It has many, many different options. Uh, the same as Reaflow 2D, it has many different options to run and to use. And, and different modules. Uh, I'm just trying to show you the, the general um, workflow that you would follow to start a, a river flow to the model from scratch. Um, so I will, uh, the first thing I will do, I will load the uh, template for river flow to the, and I will uh, I call this uh, uh, river 
um, is uh, hypothetically uh, uh, salt river um, is uh, is a river um, it's a real river but it's not salt's not name I was allowed to use the data uh, provided that I don't show the name so um, respect that um, so the first thing you load the the river flow to the template that installs the, the menus that we will be using particular to river flow to the and there are other menus that are general to SMS now something that is interesting that if you're exposed already to SMS you use SMS with other models uh, it will be straightforward to start using river flow to the directly you don't even need to to buy another copy of SMS so you can just plug in uh, river flow to the with uh, we have developed a a link uh, based in the generic model and you can start using uh, with that template and the reflow to the engine that right away um, so once you have the template uh, uh, we'll start importing data uh, for example this is a um, aerial image that shows um, this uh, river it's very useful to have the aerial image the aerial image is automatically georeferenced uh, based on the projection we're going to show um, uh, that you can select the projection um, sms works with uh, virtually all um, projections so you can think of um, and i will use here the actual projection for this side that are state plane coordinates for the united states uh, California zone 5 and these are in feet you can work as I said before in metric and different projections as well um, now I, that I have the aerial image I will import the elevation data set and this uh, import wizard is very convenient uh, it's available in SMS you can import the data in many different formats. Uh, it's sim similar to the Excel uh, import wizard. Uh, for example, you can filter some uh, initial lines or headers you may have here. You can uh, look at the first few lines of the file and associate uh, each of these columns with X, Y, Z, or Z, Y, X, or whatever form you have it. And you can also import uh, other parameters that you can associate later. So this is the data. Uh, these are actually data points. You can zoom in. Uh, SMS allows you to zoom in almost, uh, you know, indefinitely deeper into uh, the area as you can see here you see the aerial background uh, the point data you can display the point data in uh, using the uh, uh, the contour uh, color scheme um, I will use the uh, reverse default value you can see colors that uh, show the uh, elevations and you see as that I, as I move the cursor, you see here in the this uh, uh, this toolbar how the elevations uh, are indicated on the location of the cursor. So um, you see uh, this has created automatically a new layer here. This is the bed elevation layer. I have here the the uh, what is will become the conceptual model here. And you have the image you can turn off and on uh, these uh, different features. Um, so now let's uh, let me change here the name here to Salt River, um, and I will um, also indicate here that I will be using the generic 2D mesh. That is where we have developed our river flow 2d template and I will create here an external extent based on polylines it can be a polygon but I will create uh, four polylines that will represent the limits of the domain so this is the downstream this is the 
eastern domain and this is the north okay so now I will redistribute the vertices here so that the mesh generation in SMS, one of the mesh generation um, method, uh, uses the distribution of vertices in the external domain. So I will uh, use this method here. So I will select uh, this and redistribute the vertices and I will use 100 foot size. So you see now I have uh, vertices redistributed all along the external uh, polygon. Now I will make sure this is a polygon. I will build the polygons here. And I will now select the boundary conditions. So I select this. I just by clicking here, it selects this um, downstream boundary. And I will use... Uh, this, all these dialogues are specific for Riverflow2D, it's created in the template. And I will create here a free outflow condition. So I have a free outflow condition, and now here I have, I want to create here an inflow condition. So I create here a, an exterior boundary with discharge, and I will put here a say uh, 220, this is the peak charge that I'm going to be using here upstream. So this is a steady state, you can also uh, model a non-steady non state condition, a uh, hydrograph say, but it's very simple to model the steady state with this form. Um, so let me now make sure that the polygon is uh, correct, so, so I select the whole area and uh, I will select the mesh type, I, it's, it's called paving, it's the default, there are many other options here. And the, to link this with the elevation data set, I will link it with the scatter set, this one here, that I previously imported. And if there are points extrapolated, I will use inverse distance weighting. I don't need to set, so you know, at this point, the material, material means the uh, roughness parameter. I uh, will use the default values just to make a quick run here. And then I will generate the mesh. To generate the mesh, I use the feature object map to the mesh. I will turn off the points and I will display the mesh using elements with contour, and the contours will be uh, color fill. This is the default, the default template. So now we have uh, the, the mesh, we have already the inflow and outflow condition, and we essentially have everything we need to make the run. Uh, we just need to um, select uh, the, the mesh uh, module and click here on Riverflow 2D, define global parameters. Uh, for example, you can select here which model you want to run, either the finite element, the plus GPU and the plus CPU, um, simulation time, output interval, if the simulation is a steady state or, or transient, and again, all of these uh, uh, dialogues are specific for the Riverflow 2D integration with SMS. You have uh, some of the data for the modules here as well. Uh, bed load, sediment, suspended sediment, model debris flows. This is all entered uh, here in this dialogue. So I will uh, accept the defaults here. By the way, you have here the number of cores or threads that the model will be using, the ones you want to, the model to use. And now we can run the model. Oh, I forgot to, sorry. I forgot to save file, and give a name here, salt river three.
Okay, and then I uh, will draw. On. So the model um, starts running. It runs very quickly. This is a, a relatively fast run. Uh, it's only one hour. It's a very small mesh. It runs very quick. Um, Rear flow to this is a quick model. It's, uh, it's, it's a model, even the CPU version is very fast. Uh, the, obviously, the GPU version is much faster. Uh, but it's a model that doesn't, uh, it's very robust. It doesn't care too much about how you do some things. Except uh, if you have a reasonable mesh, it will run very fast in general. But look at this. I want to point your attention to the volume conservation error. This line here shows the volume conservation error. If you see, is this rarely varies. Uh, it's always in this order of 10 to the minus 14 percent. percent. This is inflow and outflow, and, and this is simulation time and some other factors here. So <clears throat> once a model runs, uh, it automatically calculates the, uh, the output uh, results. You can import that. Um, is in a binary format. It generates also uh, a number of ASCII uh, files for results. But you can very easily look at the, these are the time steps or the output time. Uh, every six minutes in this case is uh, what, the, what I selected. And you can see, for example, the depth or the velocity, uh, the, uh, the velocity magnitude, the fruit number. You, you can have uh, also combinations of this plot. You can, for example, you can zoom in here. Let me zoom in a little bit. And you can display, uh, for example, I can el eliminate the elements and add vectors. So now we see the velocity vectors, and, and we see, um, in this case, we are looking at depth, where we can make a change to combinations of other uh, uh, of the results as well. Now, now that we have this, uh, if I zoom into in a specific location, say this location here, uh, I can create an animation. Uh, this animation is very easy to create. You go to data, film, loop, create an ABI file of transient data. I accept the results. And there you have an animation. This is an ABI file that you can import later in your PowerPoint presentation or send it to someone if you want to look at the results. Uh, you can uh, also uh, generate a, um, you know, depending on the zoom that you select here, let me uh, also change a little bit the options. I will pick out the nodes and the mesh boundary. And I will turn off also the external boundary. I will create another animation so it's another view um, without uh, the mesh being evident here now there is another um, type of uh, results that is the um, and you can generate also here is the film loop instead of creating the ABI file you can create the KMC file for Google Earth, and I will do that now. Um, well, let me let me do something because Google Earth uh, puts its own uh, background image. I, you don't want to have two background image uh, colliding there, so I will turn off the background image here, and I will go to data, film loop, create Google Earth, train scene animation. Let me, let me just create, sorry, let me just create the uh, Google Earth. OK, 
Okay, so this this file can be re directly uh, visualized in in Google Earth. Uh, you can see here. Uh, this is the I have several of them created here, but this is uh, the Google Earth. You you can see you can uh, scroll or look at the animation um, or or go step by step directly in Google Earth. This is the, actually the aerial background of Google Earth, not the one I have in the project. So it's, it's very um, straightforward to go from zero to having a full animation in Google Earth. So if you've seen, we just, uh, it took us uh, less than 15 minutes to put all this together. Uh, so I think that SMS uh, together with uh, Riverflow 2D um, it can can provide you with uh, the the combination of, uh, of modeling and software tools that you need for your two dimensional models. Let me show you another um, way to visualize results. Uh, is the three D option. So you can. Let, let me. I think it's better if I use in this particular case. Let me show you uh, the elements. So the 3D view allow you to look at the uh, 3D surface with, in this case, I have a vector, also velocity vector, but it's very, very convenient to look at the model in 3D view. And as you can see, it takes almost no effort to do it. It's very, very efficient to handle this type of uh, um, output and, and post-processing in the SMS system. Now, let me show you um, the uh, another type of film loop that is called the uh, flow trace. Um, Now the, the flow traces are also very interesting to know where the water is going and how if, if you have uh, stagnation points and if you have some other areas, it's very easy also to create this type of animation and and as you can see, it's, it's, um, it takes uh, directly the model results that we have created in RiverFlow 2D and it plots in, in animation form. It's, it's very, very convenient to find. Um, well, there, there are many other um, options that you could use here. Uh, as I said, you have in um, in SMS uh, Riverflow 2D all the modules. Uh, you have dialogues to enter the data of uh, the different modules in different ways. And I, I think that uh, with this integration, uh, we have uh, we, we can offer to SMS users and also to new users who want to take advantage of the SMS interface uh, probably the most advanced tools in in uh, pre-processing and post-processing of uh, two-dimensional models uh, in totally integrated with uh, Riverflow 2D. Um, I want to give you uh, some time to ask questions. I have already a few questions that I need to address. Uh, before that, let me finalize here with uh, giving you some, some information about the uh, Riverflow 2D SMS edition licensing. Um, uh, Riverflow 2D supports uh, uh, SMS version 11.1 .1 and 11.2, which is the latest. The one I've been using is the latest 11.2. Um, if you already have uh, SMS, one of these versions, you only need the engine and the generic model link that uh, Hadronia um, develops. Um, obviously, the full licenses include both the SMS and the real flow 2D. We, we provide the whole package to you. Um, the package includes upgrades and updates for one year and also technical support. And we also provide a two-hour uh, online course 
to help you getting started. That's all included in the license price. Then after that, uh, you don't need to have subscription if you don't need to. So you can continue using the model model perpetually if you want. Um, but uh, we recommend the subscription option because uh, only paying 15% of the license cost allow you to have full upgrades and updates. That means that any new version that we release, uh, you will have it during the year at no additional cost. And also you will get uh, full technical support from our side. Um, academic versions have a 15% discount and also we have a um, lab version that allows you to install the software in many computers. Um, and we also provide a trial version if you're interested upon request. This is our, our main uh, information email, it's info at hydronia.com. And I would like to take some time then to give you a chance to uh, ask some questions and I will try to answer uh, them as much as I can. Okay, so let me start here. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I, I have a request here to uh, see if I can show how to change the mesh. Um, okay, uh, let me let me try to do that here briefly and show it to you. Um, yeah, someone wants to see how you can refine the mesh here. Okay, let me turn off results from here. So I'm back into the conceptual uh, model, in the map data here. Let, let's say you want to refine uh, the mesh in this area. Uh, you have some kind of, uh, I don't know, area here that you're interested in looking in, in more detail. Um, okay, so you can select this this polygon, um, redistribute the vertices, for example. Let's say we were using 100 outside, I will use 20 here, and then um, I just need to recreate the polygons. And I think that's all. So now I have an area here where I have a much finer mesh and gradually uh, it expands to reach the um, the 100 element size here. So by using these tools here you have a lot of flexibility. You can uh, refine the mesh as much as you want with any complex uh, feature you may, may have. Okay, so uh, another question here by Gerald. Um, okay, uh, if you buy Riverflow 2D with SMS through your site, how long um, how long does the SMS license last? Uh, it well, it's, it, it's it's typically it's one year. You can continue using it, but uh, it's uh, the SMS license is uh, for one year, and then you 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 can um, uh, subscribe for optionally to continue having updates and and also technical support after you can continue using it anyway uh, without without subscription, but you will not get the final the the, the updated uh, software. Uh, can this soft program compare hydraulic uh, results between different runs? Uh, difference in hydraulic shear stress and existing and proposed conditions? Yes, yes. You can do all that. You can compare uh, differences in water surface elevation, run A versus run B. Um, the, any, any parameter you can compare between different runs. Yeah, you can do that. Um, well, uh, the cost of grading, uh, I have a question here, which is the cost of grading from Rearflow2D? Uh, the old version, the finite 
uh, finite element to the finite volume, the plus, uh, okay, I'm sorry to say, but you have come to the wrong person to to ask. I'm, I'm sorry about it. I'm, I'm not very good at that, the sales part, but uh, I, I mean, and the pricing, um, I, I can... I, I will take note of that, and, and someone will send you an email with the with the pricing. Um, but it's it's not very expensive at all to upgrade from the finite element to the finite volume. We'll, we'll give you a very very good deal on that because we want everybody to to take advantage of this new model, which is very uh, is, is very accurate. Um, okay, what is the maximum number of elements for the mesh generation? Engine. This is a question by Mark. Uh, Mark, I I don't think there is a pre-established maximum number. Uh, I, well, I can tell you there is no a maximum number hardwired uh, in, in either the SMS or the model. Um, but it's all limited probably by the operating system or if you have a 64 bit version of a 32 bit version um, there is a limitation um, if you running the GPU version the GPU uh, the, depending on your hardware the GPU has a different memory available and I'm talking about the memory in the GPU card and that will probably be the most uh, important limitation you may encounter for that particular version but I, I don't think there is uh, I, we have we have done runs with six million elements, uh, and we have encountered some limitation trying to run with ten million elements. Not because of the model, but because of the mesh generation engine itself. Sometimes, uh, if the mesh is too complicated, it can create some issues there. Um, okay. Uh, well, I have a lot of questions. Uh, can you combine the bridge and sediment transport options to do scour analysis? Well, let me tell you, let me clarify something about scour analysis. The scour uh, itself, to account for scour around piers or abutments, is a three-dimensional phenomenon. Uh, with river flow 2D, you account for two-dimensional phenomenon. And the sediment transport, the erosion and the position patterns that you can get here, um, it accounts for the general erosion and deposition patterns. If you're looking at localized uh, scour, you can use the results of the river flow 2D uh, base uh, uh, to for example, the velocities and so depth and so forth, to uh, go to a different method to calculate a scour, and and then maybe you can change the uh, the, the the topography and rerun the model. But the the river flow to the model itself do not determine the three dimensional scour that uh, you should be looking at around bridge piers and structures. Now, we have many users that are uh, applying the model for doing scour analysis, but they use the model to generate the general erosion pattern, the, the velocity field, and then they use that as the base to start the scour analysis. Um, okay, Shamsul, I have a question. Um, can you show a cross-section with water level? Well, I don't have that here, but yeah, you can you can do it. Uh, you can create an observation. It's very very nice in S, in the SMS system. Uh, you can create a cross section or a profile in an observation layer, and I don't have time to show you that, but I I, I would be glad to um, uh, you know in a in a future webinar to show that too. Uh, you can uh, show the plot of the cross section and and moving. Dynamically, as you move the cross section, you can see how the cross section uh, parameter changes. So for example, if you are looking at water surface elevation and, and de or depth of whatever, as you move the cross section line, you can see how that changes in the plot. It's very nice. 
Um, can we include data from AdCirc in SMS to Reflow 2D um, to couple both models? Well, in principle, yeah, I, I suppose you can. Uh, Reflow 2D reads a variety of uh, boundary conditions, so you can export from AdCirc a um, a boundary condition, let's say a, a, a water surface elevation or something, and then adapt that, uh, add that to Reflow 2D. You, you, I don't think you can, uh, you have, you, I don't see any problem in doing that, even including uh, using meshes you may have from AdSerc. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I have a request here to use the data uh, calculator tool. Unfortunately, I don't have time to do that. There is a, a data calculator tool that you can use uh, here uh, to, um, you can create new information based on your results. So if you have, uh, let's say you want to export, uh, um, we are, uh, creating a shear stress, for example, parameter. We, we export that already from the model. But sometimes you want to use a different shear stress calculation. Maybe you don't like the one we use or you want to use a, a more accurate one or something that better adapts to your area. You can use the data calculator to uh, create this new uh, result and, and then graphs that too. Uh, it's a very useful uh, tool that is available in SMS. Uh, okay, I have a question here in Spanish. <laughs> I, I will read it, but uh, uh, I will need to answer that in English. Uh, um, yeah, it's about sediment transport. If you could uh, evaluate the sediment transport, how um, uh, the erosion deposition patterns would be affected by um, building uh, a river works uh, or a structure in the river. Yes, you can use the model for that. Yeah, that's one of the uses of, uh, of the model to look at different alternatives and then comparing that alternative, how they affect uh, the flow in the river. Okay, I uh, have another question here. I can take a couple of more. I'm running out of time here. Um, Okay, this is by Torben. Torben asks, uh, in list of coming developments, uh, you mentioned 1D, 2D. Um, why do you consider to include this? Okay, interesting question. Uh, okay, the, the main purpose of the 1D, 2D coupling is first we, because we think that most models out there that do it, they, um, they don't probably use the best approach available. I think we can uh, have a more accurate way to do it. And, um, and the advantage of using 1D and 2D is to save computer time. Say you're not interested in the main river flow, but you are mostly interested in the overland flow. In that case, you don't need so much detail in the river. Uh, and then you can use the 1D approximation and then use 2D in the floodplain. So um, that will help you run the model much faster. And I tell you, if the G GPU version, um, we have up to 100 times faster simulation times. With the test we have done with the 1D, 2D, we are in the 300 times faster with the CPU version. So we are talking here about orders of magnitude faster in the 1D, 2D approach and very accurate because the link we will have for the 1D and 2D is, is much uh, better, I think, with what is out there. Um, okay, the final question I can take today, unfortunately, I'm, I ran out of time. Uh, do you have tools to estimate roughness from spatial data sets? Um, I don't think we have that directly um, in the model, but you can use the tools we have in SMS uh, to relate polygons, land use polygons, or any coverage type, soil type, and so forth, with um, with Manning Zen. 
in other words, you can use in SMS the data calculator, you can have in Argus One some other tools that you can use it to, to relate the land use and soil type, for example, with the specific manning sand, and then have that relationship uh, embedded there. So that can be done. Yeah, the, I think the answer is, is uh, with the combination of Reflow 2D and, and either SMS or Argus One, you could do that. Um, okay, so uh, I have I have like 10 more questions, unfortunately, that I cannot uh, have to uh, um, close, uh, wrap it up uh, now. I, I wanted to uh, uh, thank you very much for your, the attendance. We have uh, broken all records. Uh, um, very, very happy that uh, you could attend, and I hope that uh, you found the uh, webinar uh, informative uh, for your purposes. And feel free to email us and ask us any questions. I will answer the other questions by email. Uh, but if you have any other questions or comment, uh, feel free to contact me directly or to the uh, info at hydronia.com, and we will. Very happy to answer and, and uh, uh, respond to your your comments. Thank you very much, and I see you in the next uh, webinar.